Welcome back guys, Rafi Ray here. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we are doing the long awaited review of the Klipsch 1200 Dolby Atmo soundbar. I actually have it right here behind me right here, but we're gonna get into more in a second. So if you like this channel, if you like this content, make sure to hit that like, that subscribe and share it to whoever might need it. So with that said, let's get on with the review right now. Let's go. So I had this soundbar for quite some time now, maybe like three to four months already now. So I think it's a good time to do a review about it. I didn't want to review in the past because I wanted to get more time with the soundbar to kind of really fully give my honest opinion about this soundbar here to see if it's worth the price of 1900, which I actually got it for a little bit lower than that. I got it for a thousand dollars, but still a thousand dollars is a lot of money to spend on a soundbar. So, this is the time that I actually gather all my information, all my things that I like and I don't like about the soundbar, and I'm gonna give it to you guys right here in this video. All right, so let's start it, and my first thing that I wanna talk about is the look. The look of this soundbar, for me, is awesome. I like how it also has a combination to change the plates on the side, whether you have a brown setup or black setup. I opt in to add my brown plates on the side, even though my system right here is black, but I also have some brown uh, furniture here as well. So that's why I wanna have the mix of adding those plates on the other side. And also, I like how the mesh is all one full mesh in black, so it doesn't attract that many dust, so it doesn't look bad and things like that, and it's covering all the speakers. The only speakers that you see visible are the tweeters on the side. And then also, the off-powering speaker has a metal ring around them as well, which I really like that, that it adds a little bit of accent in the top of the speakers. Along with that, this subwoofer, it is all made of wood, black wood. But the only caveat to that is that it's a huge woofer, super huge. Like you really need to have the space, you know, the sub in an area that can fit and kind of see if I can blend in with your setup. Because if you don't have a space, then this subwoofer or this soundbar in particular may not fit your particular setup. So, but the look looks amazing. The other thing that I'm gonna talk about is the color. This soundbar only comes in one color, basically like the speaker grills and all that stuff. Like I say, it's like a silver material or a silver color, I should say. Also in the side, the silver right here is what actually stands out from the black, which I really like that. Uh, so the color, you know, it's pretty simple. It just kind of should be able to match with any setup out there. So look and color, it kind of goes hand in hand, but I really like those part right there. Now, as I mentioned with the subwoofer that is huge, this soundbar is also huge in size. So if you don't have a place to put it, you may want to opt in for getting a different type of soundbar. It also comes with additional two satellite speakers that are gonna be behind you. I also have to get some stand for those speakers, you know, cause they didn't come with stand. So I'll put a link in the description below about the uh, stands that I got for this satellite speaker, which they actually need to be connected to a power. So if behind you, you don't have a power outlet, then you may need to run some uh, extra extension cords to power those satellite speakers. So just be aware of that. Now, one of the reasons why I got this, you know, soundbar is actually the multiple connections that you have in the soundbar. So we have from HDMI, we got Bluetooth, we got Ethernet, we got Wi-Fi, we got digital cable, optical cable, I'm sorry, optical cable. So all those different connections come directly in the soundbar. So all what you're gonna do is actually plug all your devices, whether you have gaming consoles, uh, TVs, or whatever that might be, you're gonna plug it all into the back of this soundbar right here. So it kind of reduces a lot of clutter and reduces all those different tables going to the TV. Well, you can just have one cable going to the TV, which I'll talk about that more in a second. That's part of the uh, EARC connectivity. But imagine removing all those cables from the back of your TV and just connect it directly to the soundbar. 
that for me, it released a lot of the uh, tension or even running cables to the back of the wall, actually going into the TV, which actually have just one cable going into there. I'll have all the cables as well, but everything goes to that one cable. Uh, talking about connectivity, you know, one of the things that I actually have mine connected with is HDMI ERC. So whether you have um, all gaming consoles or anything like that, the sound from the gaming console goes into the sound bar directly and the video goes to the TV. So you only have, for example, one cable, one HDMI going directly to the TV and then you can have multiple devices connected to it. So all the sounds will come out through the sound bar. Now, if you want to know more at HDMI, E, ARC, or, or just regular ARC, I won't be getting into that right now. So hopefully you can, you know, Google and search all the other videos related about that. But that's the way I'm using it through the HDMI, E, ARC. Now, I'm pretty sure you all want to know how does it perform? You know, how does it sound? So I'll say that at times, you know, the sound is amazing. I think when you're using the app and you can see that the actual audio that's coming out is Dolby Atmos, then I think you're gonna have the best experience over there. We talked talk about more about the app in a second, but if you don't see it in the app, or maybe if you see it on the device or the uh, media that you're playing that is not really playing Dolby Atmos, it might be coming just as stereo, or it might give you some weird digital out, I think it's called, or surround out, the digital surround. There's so many different like audio formats out there. So it will vary, you know, especially voices. Like if you're watching a movie and you wanna listen to the dialogue, you know, that the characters in the movies are talking about, all the sound from voices, it comes from the middle, from the center channel of the surround bar. And sometimes, most of the time, audio will be louder around you and the voices are not as clear or they're not being projected as, as much as you wanted to, to understand what's happening. But you will hear like helicopters and you will hear like shooting and all that stuff going around you like super loud, nice. But when you wanna to listen to what they're saying, sometimes it's kinda of hard to understand what they're saying. So that's kinda of like a, a big deal for me so far, even though it's in Dolby Atmos, most of the sounds will come directly from the center. Now, there are times that if you're playing like an animated movie or whatever, you will hear the voices come from everywhere. Disney Plus or maybe uh, Netflix or any other streaming services. It's kind of weird. So it's kind of like a in-between kind of situation right there. That's why I like the sound, but at times I don't like it. And I tend to tweak a lot of the app for like treble and, and bass and all that stuff and change it to movie mode. Sometimes I put music mode because it's louder just so I can hear it better. So it's kind of like a, you're gonna be, you know, fighting with it most of the time. Now talking about the app, it is a hit and miss. I don't know if it's the app problem or if it's a connectivity or what's going on, but when I try to connect via Wi-Fi to this soundbar, which when Wi-Fi is perfect, it sometimes has a lot of errors connecting, but if I connect my Ethernet cable in the back of the sound bar, the app will connect all the time. So I don't know what's going on there. And most of the time, if I'm like at home, it will connect perfectly. But if I'm like out and about, and if I wanted just to log into the app just to connect, sometimes it will have hard times. So I don't know if it's something about the app that it only works in the same Wi-Fi network where you're at home, or is it something or my, or my situation with the Wi-Fi configuration that I have, which I don't think so because everything else works fine. But sometimes the app crashes and things like that, so I don't like that. And then also on the app, when you want to change the volume, it may not send the signal directly to the soundbar so it can go up and down and you can see it in real time. It will kind of will be like a major delay on the app. That's something I don't like about it. But for the most part, it works when, when, when it's Ethernet connected and I'm at home and I'm using it. So it's like a hit or miss. And then to be honest, there's not really a lot of controls you can do in the app. So I think the app needs to, needs to get better. You know, they probably need to do a refresh or maybe find the developers where they make it and kind of keep tweaking it because it's still not perfect. Uh, like I said, um, one of the things that I was so like looking forward to do is actually to connect to my home kit setup 
with my Apple HomeKit, it had a lot of issues trying to find the soundbar in the home app to add it. It wasn't until like a month or two months ago that I wanted to add a different accessory. Uh, I wanted to add like a light bulb that I was working on and then the Clips soundbar show up as a, uh, a device to add that I'm like, oh, that's weird. Why was showing up right now? I haven't even clicked anything and I just clicked on it and it failed at first, but then after a while when I got closer, then it connected to it. But I haven't been able to use that so far because most of the time it says that it's disconnected, you know, or not responding as almost everything from HomeKit does, that it doesn't respond. But I had it connected that once, but I haven't been able to actually use it to see if it's actually work or not. Um, that's kind of like a, I don't know if that's a problem with the app or connectivity issues or whatever. So we'll see. Hopefully Clips can get it together and update their app. We got to the part where I'm gonna talk about something that I hate a lot. It's the thing that's actually bothered me the most. And then pretty much it's like, if I haven't used a soundbar for a couple days, three to four days or something like that, and I just turn on the TV, which is technically supposed to turn on the TV and the soundbar at the same time, and I can hear a sound, when I start playing, you know, something in the TV, no sound will come out and the soundbar is on. Everything's connected. Everything's the way you had it. But for some reason, it will not send out. It recognizes that the Clips soundbar is connected. It knows that the sound needs to go out through the uh, HDMI EARC, but no sound will come out. If I play the audio and switch it to internal speakers on the TV, it's playing fine. But when I go back to it and added HDMI, ERC, it's like playing, but no sound is coming out at all. And everything's fine. So I don't know what is going on after a couple of days or after being using it, it just disconnects automatically. And for the price that you're paying for this soundbar, you're supposed to have it working. You know, it's supposed to work, you know, and it's not working. So all the time, what I have to do to fix it is disconnect the power cable from the soundbar, hit pause on the TV, on the whatever I'm playing, wait for a couple of seconds, plug the cable back in, and then just wait like probably 10 seconds for the whole system to reboot or to reconnect, and then the sound start playing back up again, and it's all good. So what's going on? What the hell? You know, you pay a thousand, even if you got a thousand, ninety, nine hundred dollars for this soundbar, that shouldn't be happening. You know, you're paying a lot of money for this soundbar and sometimes that thing happens. So I'm like, what the hell? I hate it, you know, but at the same time, when it works, it works great. You like owning the soundbar. You're like, oh yeah, great. Sounds great. But those things right there that I mentioned, and the sound issues, the voices, the disconnecting, the app issue, it's just like, what the hell did I spend that much money for? You know, I haven't been able to reach clips for, for anything about it. I haven't seen no one really talking about it online either. So I don't know if I have a defective unit or not, but that's kind of the issues that I have. If you guys are having those issues, please let me know in the comments down below. If you find a workaround, also, please let me know in the comments down below. I look forward to listening to all of you guys' responses. If you have any questions, also write it down below. So we got here to the best part. Is it worth it to actually own this soundbar? To be quite honest, I don't think so. I like how it sounds, you know, when it works. I like the way it looks. Uh, the sound is amazing and everything, but it's worth the money though. And I don't think so. When you spend that much money on this soundbar, you expect to sound perfect. Because I do own another pair of Clitch speakers, which I'll put a link right up here so you guys can see those for a computer. And they sound amazing with no issues whatsoever. So I was like, okay, let me get Clips because those speakers are working great. But for this particular one, unless they fix those issues, you know, with the disconnecting after not using it for a while and that voice is not being projected all the way through, make sure it works with Apple HomeKit uh, perfectly, make sure it works over Wi-Fi, fix the app, you know, and things like that, uh, so that the app can actually recognize that you're playing Dolby Atmos content or not. I'll say you're probably not worth it. Probably get a different soundbar to be quite honest. But if you can disregard those things, 
when you're listening to something, it sounds amazing. Especially, which is weird, especially when you play one of those YouTube commercials right here, all those YouTube ads for like testing out your uh, Dolby Atmos, stuff like that. If you stand in the middle right here and you play one of those like jungle rain, uh, rain dropping and thunders and all that stuff, the sound, to be quite honest, it is like 360 degrees. It's all over and a super an immersed sound, especially when you have the up firing speakers going up and bouncing down, you know, from the ceiling down to you, you hear an immersive sound. So it looks, I mean, it looks and it sounds amazing, but that's not gonna happen all the time. Cause whether you play Disney Plus, you're watching Mandalorian, whether you're watching anything from Amazon Prime or Netflix or any other streaming services, some of them, they do support Dolby Ammo, some of them, they don't. And to be honest, sometimes like Dolby Ammo, like I said, it's not really all that great. I don't know why. But uh, there are times where it sounds amazing. Like the other day I was watching on Prime Video, the uh, Citadel, the Citadel, the new like spy show and things like that. And the first like two episodes where there's a lot of action scenes, it was sounding great, amazing for a lot of shooting, a lot of happening, like everything. But when the actors are talking to each other, you couldn't really hear them well. So that was the issue. It was like, wow, it sounds immersive. It sounds great you know, all around me, but at the same time, when they're talking to each other, it's like, I can't really like hear as loud as I'm hearing the other sounds, which is kind of weird. I don't get it. I really don't get it. But you know, I'm gonna be stuck with this sound bar. I'm not planning on returning anything like that because it looks great and it sounds great too. There's no problem with it through Apple Music or Spotify or whatever. But when it comes to, you know, some minor things, you know, maybe I'm too picky, I don't know. But uh, it's not an always overall performance that you're gonna get. But other than that, sounds great. So if you can get by that, take a look at it. This is my honest opinion. I'm not getting paid whatsoever, obviously not. But I just wanted to let you guys know how I feel about this soundbar right here. Now, if you wanna know more about the setup that I got going on right here, let me know in the comments down below. I have a pair with my LG 65 OLED display right here and I have my art wall in the back. I also have the Gobi light in the back as well. So whenever something changes the background, the lights also will change in the background and it will follow it. We also have some extra lighting here on the side. Like I said, we also have the sound bar right here and I have my subwoofer hitting here in the corner. On top of that, I also have my PlayStation and Xbox uh, One on the side right here. So I have all of that in my Nintendo Switch as well. So all of that is connected through the uh, ERC cable. So if you wanna know more information about any of the setup that I got going on right here, let me know in the comments down below. Well, that was it guys. That was the uh, personal review about the Eclipse Cinema 1200 with Dolby Atmos. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like and that subscribe. Remember, you can also support the channel by clicking the things button below. You can also check out one of these playlists right here that I have for you guys. I do a lot of things here, so I'll appreciate you guys for all your support. And with that said, this is Rafi Red signing out.